What's up y'all? Welcome to this video. We're going to be talking about today how to take care of post-op patients. And the first part of this video is going to be talking about landing them in the ICU. So in our unit, we are the PACU, right? So we play a PACU role when our patients are coming out of surgery. So I'm going to kind of go through a checklist as far as what you need to do when you are the PACU nurse in the ICU, okay? So, th and this is for everybody, okay? So for everybody, prior to arrival, set up your room with suction, ambu bag, and zero the bed with all of your appropriate equipment. If the patient's intubated, let RT know so they can bring a ventilator, okay? So if and a lot of the surgeries that we do at our facility, we do the same ones pretty much all the time. We do a lot of kidneys. We do a lot of hepatobiliary surgeries with Dr. Bothla. We do some bowel surgeries. We do um, urology surgeries. We do vascular surgeries. So once you start seeing these surgeries, you kind of know what they need. So you know how to set up the room. The big thing is set up the room before, okay? When, after, after this, you know, they're going to call report hopefully sooner rather than later, um, but they're going to call report. You're going to take all that information down that you possibly can get from them, patient history, what happened during the surgery, what you do, um, any relevant stuff that they're going to be coming out on. So do they have a central line? Do they have an A line? Do they, are they intubated? Are they going to be extubated? Uh, get this information and then lastly, t get an ETA from them. Ideally, your OR nurse is going to be calling you ahead of time before, you know, before they're closing to say, hey, this is what's going on. This is the history. This is the report. And then you tell them what's the ETA. So maybe they have an hour left in surgery, et cetera. You want to get this information so you can prepare. Um, now, if they're calling you when they're closing, that varies based off surgery, how long that's going to take. So if they're telling you they're closing, it's probably going to be pretty soon that the patient's getting here. Okay. So once the patient arrives, this is if they're not intubated. Okay. Immediately upon arrival, connect your patient to the monitor and place them on a 50% Venny mask. Okay. Do not swap cords or the brain for the monitor with OR. The reason why is, if, is, is, because if we get the monitor from OR, so we get that brain that goes on our GE monitors, if we do that, likely what's going to happen is the patient is not going, the, those vitals will not be able to cross over into Meditech, okay? So this is why you don't switch the stuff. Also, they're going to give you some cords that maybe aren't so nice, okay? Maybe they work, maybe they don't. Um, so you are going to not change the cords, okay? Just keep our cords. The first set of vital signs you need to give to anesthesia. This is including a temperature, okay? They need these vital signs as soon as possible, okay? If the patient is diabetic, also get a blood sugar. Assess the patient. So you as the primary nurse need to assess your patient. Do like your quick focused assessment. Make sure you're also checking the surgical sites. So for example, say this is a kidney transplant. We're going to listen to their lungs. We're going to look at their surgical site and we're going to see if they're making any urine. Um, that's, those are the big important things. Say it's a Dr. Bothla. He did a partial hepatectomy. We're going to listen to our lungs, make sure they're all good. We're going to look at the surgical site. We're going to see, are there, is there a hematoma? Is there dressing saturated, etc. After you do your little focused assessments, you're going to get your post-op labs if ordered. So this is a thing that I like to bring up. No time, at no time in the ICU should you be the only ICU nurse in the room. There needs to be another person there. This other person can get labs. Um, if they place an o, a, a fully in the OR, per our hospital policy, we send a UA reflux. Um, at this point, once the um, anesthesiologist leaves, we can go ahead and take off any IV fluids that they had going to them. They use those IV flu uh, fluids to push their drugs so they can push the drug in the Y site and then they can squeeze the bag and that'll be the flush. Okay. Um, but we don't need those in ICU so we can take those off the patient. Okay. But don't do this until your anesthesiologist leaves because if they want us to give meds or if they want to give meds, they're going to want that setup still there. So we could take that off, um, with the central line. If we get those central lines, we want to make sure that we waste and flush any IV port 
and that we hang any new IV fluids that the physician ordered. We want to make sure that we're also doing eye trace here. So we're just making sure that, you know, maybe is it a presser? Is it going in through a central line? Hopefully. If they placed a new central line, we need to get an x-ray. Um, and then we need to just continue and look at all the orders. So electronic or paper orders, whatever. Most of our orders are going to be electronic, but, um, you know, with some surgeons, maybe they do still use paper orders. So you want to make sure you look through the chart chart just to make sure. If there are any protocols in place, you want to make sure that you're continuing those. So electrolyte, vent weaning, um, maybe your sedation orders, your restraint orders, the Baxter band orders that we use in our ICU. Um, once you look at all these protocols, we need to treat this patient's pain. Okay. Um, so a majority of the time, the anesthesiologist will put in PACU orders for pain management, maybe fentanyl, morphine, Dilaudid. We can give those, and then likely the surgeon is going to give them some maintenance um, pain medication, so like morphine Q3 hours, etc. So give your PACU pain meds, and then after that, you'll be good. Most PACU orders, they're only good for about four hours. Um, after that, this patient needs to be on their maintenance, okay? So, for example, Dr. Bothla, he likes to use Dilaudid PCAs. So, you can give your PACU pain meds and then set them up on the PCA and then they'll be good to go. Um, as far as documentation, um, we need to document what's called post-anesthesia recovery scores or PAR scores. And the way we do this is that we do a full set of vital signs every five minutes three times. So say they got here at three o'clock. What we're going to do is we're going to get their vital signs at three o'clock, 305, 310, and then we're going to get Q15 minute vital signs. So 30, three o'clock, 305, 310, 315, 330, 345, and then four o'clock. All those vital signs, they need to go in the electronic chart okay so you make sure those vital signs are in the computer in addition in your critical care flow record you're going to see your parse assessment scores so they're going to be basically asking about the patient's mentation their breathing are they able to move their extremities is their blood pressure stable from the surgery so you're going to fill those out at those designated times as well so you need vital signs and you need those par assessment scores documented at each of those times that i just said okay now, surgery specific, let's talk about a few of these things. Um, so kidney transplants, kidney transplants, there's a separate about 45 minutes to an hour class that we have on this channel. So if you want to see how to take care of post-op kidneys, go look at that. Um, but some of the additional immediate post-op things we need to look at are urine output, do an EKG, and a renal ultrasound if it's ordered. For liver transplants, we would do an EKG. We would connect the T-tube to uh, the drainage bag, NG tube, and the devolves to suctions. And we would connect the hemisphere to the pulmonary artery uh, catheter. And we would also be doing a paired gas, so a VBG and an ABG. For bothlas, if you come, they come out with an NG tube, we need to put it to suction. Vascular patients, we need to do a Doppler checks or pulse checks with a Doppler. And uh, we would document those in Meditech as well. So some surgeries, you have additional specific things that you need to do as you are the PACU nurse. So um, additional documentation, filling out the skip form, making sure that OR, eyes and nose are... That was my phone. Um, so making sure that you fill out your skip, that you document the OR eyes and nose on the flow sheet, and you make sure that they're in Meditech. And once the patient is settled, then you need to get the family from the waiting area and orient them to the unit. So don't be letting your family wait an hour before they get to see their family member. You're going to have some really upset family members if they're waiting three, four hours. Now, it's understood if the patient starts to get worse, right, that, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But... Just so you know, the families, they're not getting these updates. After the surgery, after they land in the ICU, the surgeon will likely go talk to them wherever they are in the surgical waiting area or the ICU waiting area, and then they're going to be waiting there for you to come get them. So contact them, give them a call, tell them they can come in, or you can go get them yourself. Uh, but that is how to land the patient in ICU, the PACU in the ICU. Your um, little cheat sheet that I made, 
These are going to be in the description box, so go ahead and look there. That's going to take you to a Google Doc that you can print your little cheat sheet here, okay? So you're going to do that every time, every single time. That's going to be how you land your patients in the ICU from back from the OR. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The next part of this video is going to be going over Dr. Bothless patients. Um, so I'll see you in the next one. If not, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Adios.